The year is 1985. Season two of Miami Vice just came out. America's import-export business was booming, and Michael Jordan was chosen as the NBA Rookie of the Year. Big hair, big fashion, and big personalities were front and center in the 1980s. This heightened level of robust style translated to every fast of life, and especially to cars. The Chevrolet Camaro went from this to this. The Mustang went from this to this. Even the Chevy Corvette went full triangle-shaped with the C4 generation in the 80s. Automotive styling was getting crazier and crazier for seemingly every single manufacturer. But the Porsche 911, for all intents and purposes, stayed relatively the same. The 911 kept its classic proportions and sprinkled in some bits of 80s flair with the 930 generation, but all in all, the design was still fairly muted for the time. But this was the 1980s after all. This was the era of go big or go home for some extremely well-off individuals. The standard 911 just wasn't cutting it for these people. It just did not have that wow factor that other cars on the road had at the time. There was, however, a small Porsche tuning company out of Stuttgart, Germany, named Gembala, who built their own version of the Porsche 911 for the 1980s. A car so expensive and so unnecessarily insane that their target market ended up being high-profile drug traffickers like Jorge Valdez and celebrities like Vanilla Ice and Sir Mix-a-Lot. And rather than shy away from this interesting choice of clientele, Gambala doubled down offering some of the most insane options ever fitted to cars in the 80s, let alone to a Porsche 911. If you want to hear the full story of the absolutely insane Gambala Porsche of the 1980s, then watch to the end of this video to know all there is to know about the Gambala Avalanche, Mirage, Mistral, and more. Welcome to Rare Cars. This is the channel where we break down the world's most fascinating performance vehicles and what makes them so unique. If you want to learn more about other exciting vehicles like the Aston Martin Vantage V600 or even the Bill Thomas Cheetah, then click the subscribe button because we have plenty of more exciting content coming in the near future. But that out of the way, let's get to what you really came to this video for, the Gambala Porsches. So Gambala actually started from pretty humble beginnings in 1979 with the main purpose of completing custom interior upgrades for BMWs and Porsches. Gambala would tear these interiors apart and reupholster them while also adding new state-of-the-art instruments and tech into these interiors. This was the 1980s, so state-of-the-art tech would include aftermarket head units, video players, and more stuff of that nature. Gambala's body of work started to rapidly increase as demand soared. Interior modifications demand kept on increasing for Gambala over the next few years as they expanded into AMG cars, Ferraris, Rolls Royces, and pretty much any other premium vehicle that you could think of. Gambala in the background began slowly working on their own flat nose exterior design for the Porsche 911. All these projects helped provide the funds and the initial proof of concept to Gambala that the desire for truly bespoke vehicles was out there and it was plentiful. Then in 1984, Gambala released the two cars that would change their trajectory forever the Avalanche, and the Cyrus. Even for the 1980s, these two Gimbala Porsches looked absolutely insane. Not a single body panel was left untouched by Gimbala. These cars got their signature flat nose front end with the appropriate pop-up headlights. They had widened fenders, Testarossa-styled side intakes, and even a giant spoiler that looked like it was sculpted by erosion. These Gimbala cars also had dual triple exhausts because, well, why not? While Gimbala focused primarily on the bespoke designs of their cars, they partnered with Porsche tuning powerhouse Roof to work on the engine and drivetrain stuff. Roof was able to tune these initial Gimbala cars up to 375 horsepower, all put down through a dogleg 5-speed manual transmission. Which 375 horsepower in 1985 was a ton of power for a road car. You have to keep in mind this was during the height of the emissions problems in the United States and across the world, where V8 powered muscle cars in America, for example, were barely touching over 230 horsepower. But what's even more crazy than the power plant of these Gambala cars was the price. In 1985, one of these cars costed around 400,000 Deutschmarks, which, if you convert that to US dollars, was apparently about 700,000 US dollars at the time. In 1985, it's no wonder why only cocaine kingpins and celebrities could afford the Gambala cars. To put this in perspective, in 1987, a Ferrari F40's MSRP was $400,000. Even the American-made Vector W8 was cheaper at $450,000 US dollars. Granted, apparently for some people, $700,000 was a touch too high to purchase for a modified Porsche. A lot of Gambala cars apparently ended up selling for around the $300,000 to $400,000 US range. But that was also part of the appeal of the Gambala lineup. 
These cars were so expensive and so exclusive that you had to be slightly insane yourself to buy one. The founder of Gambala knew this apparently and wanted to capitalize on it. According to prolific drug trafficker Jorge Valdez, he even opened up an office in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, which is right outside the city of Miami, to have a home base near all the Miami drug money so he could sell cars to them. Now, the story cannot be confirmed. This is not fact. It's just an assumption based off of some of the information from the time. And when you think about it, there is no better city in the world to sell Gimbalo's automotive vision into than Miami, the place that was the inspiration for Grand Theft Auto Vice City and the place that was essentially the U.S.'s cocaine capital during the 1980s. For all the money that these Gimbala cars costed, though, one thing for certain was that you did get your choice of whatever options you wanted. Cameras for side view mirrors? Done. Five-figure aftermarket sound systems? Done. A center console with a champagne cooler and matching Tiffany champagne glasses? Done. Or even a floor-mounted safe to store your watches and jewelry if you were a celebrity, or to store your Tech 9 if you were a drug dealer. In the 1980s, some Gimbala cars were even fitted with optional side mirrors that were cameras. Which, think about it now, even lots of cars today in 2022 do not have cameras for side view mirrors. These Gambala cars had these big bulky cameras and big bulky 1980s technology and they were still able to incorporate cameras for the side view mirrors. The interiors on these Gambala cars were also riddled with all sorts of tech. So much so in fact that many of these cars, the entire front trunk of the Porsche was completely full of the stuff required to run the army of aftermarket electronics throughout the car. Production number stats were pretty hard to find online, but in total there were about 13 Gambala Avalanches made, a handful of convertible Cyruses, and a handful of other more normal production cars from them in the Porsche lineup. There was even the Gambala Mirage and Mirage Evo, which were like the Avalanche, except they had 500 horsepower, and they also had a roofline that was lowered a couple inches, because, well, why not? Gambala even made wide-body 928s back in the day as well, but I couldn't find any real stats on those either. Luckily for us, every Gambala car is pretty distinct and usually the specs are very unique to each vehicle, so it's pretty easy to determine which car is which and track the history of them. If you do know the whereabouts of one, you can pretty easily track back the history and figure out exactly what the whole story behind that car is. Unfortunately for Gambala, the 1980s went about as fast as they came, which led to a steep drop off in demand for their outlandish designs. Gambala thankfully is still in business to this day, building wild versions of Porsches, but there was just something about these cars in the 1980s that was the ultimate right place, right time kind of deal. And that is your abridged history lesson on the Gimbala Porsches of the 1980s. So if you enjoyed this video, we would greatly appreciate it if you could drop a like and also share this video with other enthusiasts. Also, please make sure to subscribe to the Rare Cars YouTube channel and smash the notification bell for more documentary style videos just like this on the world's most interesting cars. Until next time, enthusiasts.